Hello and good evening. This is Leland Erickson, and this is episode five of Recycling with a Vengeance. And tonight we pick up where we left off in the previous episode, and we were putting gold on the canopy, and you can see we built up layers and layers and layers, and we got this nice finish, nice and smooth. Looks like a gold protective reflective canopy on a space fighter. And you can see some things have been happening here to this fearsome looking little ship. I've been detailing away, and as much as I said, uh, it's just a question of doing doing the brush work. You can see here the black paint wash dried over the gunmetal gray. You know how it brings the details out. And I touched up some uh, the missiles here by adding olive drab, a little dry brushing there. Added some blue for the warheads, a little black dot for the fuses. And a little black dot on the back here for the exhaust vents. And so we did that. And I'll talk a little bit more about these fancy markings and the numbers and such in a second here. Have a look at our PAL here. Now this is an example of the detailing I did. Uh, again, you can see I've added the olive drab on the missiles poking out of their launch tubes. And we did some, I did some blackening of the gunmetal using black washes on the cannons here and I little dry brushed a little bit of black into the back blast on the vent here so it shows like it's been fired more than once and the same thing here but after black washing this main exhaust engine exhaust I dry brush black in here so it looks like it's got soot build up and so on going on so you know it looks like I've seen a little operational use and now you're probably wondering how did you get that fancy face on there? Well, I'll, I'll tell you how I did it. You build it up in layers just like you do anything else when you're painting with acrylics. And I got a demonstrator here on its PAL. So you see, I started by doing black for the overall width of the mouth. And then once that was down, I started doing the teeth. Basically, white triangles just patiently plodding along. At first, it did all the, I'll do all the uppers, and then I'll do the lowers. And I try to get them in sync so they look like they're going to actually nest together when it bites down on something. And then when the, that's all dry, the white's all dry, I go back with the red, and I just line out the, outline the lips going around. And it works the same way for the eyes. And so when you're done, it looks something like this. Coming right at you. Glad to see you. Now, what about these fun, fancy markings? You know, like the maintenance marking here and the, the fighter pilot's name here and the, the name of the ship, the fireball, and its uh, number. And of course, a nice fun squadron marking. And notice too, because these are all water slide decals I'm pointing at. Here's another fun one. It's like a rocket back blast warning. Notice how it conforms to the contours of the model. You're wondering, how did that happen? It's a water slide decal. Well, let's, what is a water slide decal? Well, to begin with, they come on backing paper. They look like this. And they need to be cut off the backing paper with a pair of sharp scissors. I have my trusty surgical scissors here. Now, decals kind of come two ways when they're water slide decals. Either the whole page is one big sheet of clear decal film, the decals have been printed on it, and therefore you've got to meticulously cut each one out very carefully. You want to leave just a little bit, not a lot, of the clear film around the decal. The better ones, the handier ones, as far as I are, which I consider better because they're handier, are individuals. And you can just see when I tilt this that you'll see that clear, that shiny kind of outline. And then it's matte between each one. As that tells you basically these are separate. They're not all on a one big clear sheet of film. And so you can just cut around them on the paper. You can do a group of them at a time. Plonk them in the water. I find clean jar lids handy as a bath, water bath for decals. So he's soaking. He's getting ready for us. Now here's our best friend when it comes to doing decals. Microscale Industries Inc. Microsol. It's a decal solvent. 
Very handy stuff. It's been around for decades. Model builders swear by it. So, observe. We're going to prepare the ground. We get a little bit of microsol on our brush. And we pick the spot where the decal is going to go down. And we lather it on like that. Now we're going to go get our decal. Reach over here and grab it. Some people say, oh, you should use tweezers and so on. Well, it depends. And I'm going to tease this off here. See, it's ready to slide right off. Now, the school of thought is, yeah, you're supposed to slide it off the paper directly onto the surface. Well, I'm cheating, as you can see. But I've been doing this a very, very long time. And it works for me. So I'm just going to position the decal where I want it. I want to kind of get it to match the other side. I'm going to tease it with my brush carefully. I don't want to rip it or damage it because the decal solvent's already going to work. It's already softening it. Yeah, see, there's one side. So I kind of want it centered and up. There we go. And I'm going to add a little more Microsol. See, just so. Just like that. Awful pretty. So that gives it its squadron marking. So now it looks like it belongs in the same unit as the first one here, Fireball. Kind of ominous to name your ship Fireball. It's like, is that what you want to do to the enemy, or is that what they're going to do to you if they actually hit you? So that's how we do that. Now, what happens after the decal sets? Well... There's another step I've learned, and this was taught to me by some experienced tabletop wargamers. Models like this that you're using for your games are going to get handled a lot. And that means wear and tear. Now, funny thing is, funny little fact for you, is that gloss coats, uh, gloss varnishes, are actually thicker and more durable than flat matte finishes. So I take some gloss varnish. And after all the decals have dried, I'm going to go back. By the way, I clean this in water before I use, use it for different things, just so you know. That's the beauty of working with acrylics. Everything cleans up with water. When you use the Microsol, it cleans with water. You don't need anything fancy. So I'm just using a cup of water. See? Cup of water. Now, yes, I've been painting too. That's why it's gray. So I grab some of this nice gooey acrylic flat mute er, bleh. I can't forget how to talk glossy varnish and I'm gonna go right over the decals and I'm gonna let it sit and you're gonna th and of course you're thinking Leland you idiot it's going to be glossy and shiny that's not gonna look right well no it's not because I'm gonna show you your other new best friend and this is a model builders best friend that's been around for very long time like way or something like 35 years or more and again this is stuff model builders tend to swear by notice I'm making sure I gloss coat all that stuff because decals even once they're dry if you were to handle a model it's quite possible that the decal will break or come right off so the gloss coat is a protective coating so now What's up with that? What do you mean there's something else to do? Well, I'll tell you what you're going to do. Your new best friend from tonight, the, to add to the list of new best friends, this is Tester's Dull Coat. Okay, see that? Dull Coat. Okay, this is a clear spray lacquer. It's a flat lacquer. It has been designed to work with model kits, plastic model kits, and specifically with decals. And what it will do is it won't cause the decal to frost. It will cause it to blend with the model. And the result is, is that that shiny film disappears. And uh, the whole thing winds up looking like it was all painted on. Like it's supposed to be there. Like on a real machine. So this is Tester's Dull Coat. This will be the last step. And it's just a clear spray varnish. So I would just shake it up. And spray it evenly over the model, let it dry, turn it over, spray the belly. Bob's your uncle, Charlie's your aunt. So one last little thing. You want it to look like it's flying? You want to put a base under it. This one I made, 
using a nail and this is the bottom of a disposable plastic wine glass. I'm not kidding. You know, this stuff gets thrown away at parties and so on. Well, I grabbed them. This is the bottom because they usually come in two parts. And I glued a common nail in. Epoxy did right in. Fit right in real neat in the hole. So, you know, just there you go. Instant flight stand. Oh, come on, get in the center of the camera. Don't be camera shy. There it is. Of course, you can do more with it. You can play around with it. You can make bases by just using the other half of this, that uh, disposable wine glass. I've done that. I'll demonstrate that another time. But that is how we do it. Now, you want to see the picture, pretty pictures of our friends here when they're 100% done and everything's been said and done to them. You can check me out on Instagram over on Facebook, hashtag Recycling with a Vengeance. And I'm wandering around Twitter a bit, so I might be found there. So, smile. Until next time, this is Leland Erickson, and this is Recycling with a Vengeance. Bye. Bye-bye. Say goodbye. Say goodnight.